When you post a pay run in CenterPoint, not only are you creating general ledger entries for the net pay for each employee, but you'll also be creating liabilities for the taxes and the deductions that are taken out of the employee's paycheck, as well as any of the employer taxes and employer benefits. For those, you'll be posting both a liability and an expense. To pay those payroll liabilities, you'll pay them from processes and pay invoices due. When you get to the screen, you might notice a list of vendors. Those are going to be the vendors that you attached to each one of your payroll liabilities. When you set up your payroll liabilities, we required you to go ahead and attach a vendor to that. The amounts that you might see next to those would represent the amounts due to that vendor for one or more pay runs. Okay, to pay these liabilities, you're going to select the company or fund up at the top. And if one of your companies or funds is primary to the other ones, you can right click and select set it as the default. So it'll be filled in on this screen by default when you come here next time. You're going to choose the bank account that you're paying them from. And again, you can right click and set that as a default too. And that'll become the default bank account for that company. If you happen to be integrated with our accounting software, then it might be helpful to separate out your payroll liabilities from other account payable or credit card liabilities. If you're standalone payroll, you're only going to be seeing payroll liabilities. One of the features we have in CenterPoint is the ability to add a payment to a vendor to an ACH file and um, that ACH file can be submitted to your bank to generate an electronic payment to it. An ACH file can contain uh, payments from more than one vendor. Okay, there, um, so when you're paying your payroll liabilities, you want to set up, uh, separate out your ACH vendors from your regular vendors. I have one vendor set up for ACH, and that's All Care of Colorado. So when I choose no ACH vendors included, it will exclude All Care of Colorado. The ability to create ACH files and add vendors to that ACH file um, is uh, discussed in another video on ACH payments. So we're not going to discuss that further in this video. Underneath each one of these vendors, you're going to see, you might see multiple dates for um, pay runs that we have not paid the liabilities for yet. Um, and if you wanted to, you could actually filter that list a little bit further by changing the due date up in the top right. So if I wanted only those payroll liabilities that were from 3-6 or earlier, I could change this date to 3-6 and hit tab there and then if I open that back up you'll see that it, um, it excluded those ones that were after the date of 3-6. I'm going to go back to my original date. The payment date is going to represent the date that the liabilities are going to get po or the payments are going to get posted as of. It'll also be the date that prints on a check. Below that, you're going to choose your sequence number. Now, it does say check number, but you can have multiple sequences on this bank account. And my default sequence is a check number, but I do pay some of these vendors by logging on to their website and initiating the payment. And uh, that's what we call an electronic funds transfer. So I set up a separate sequence for that. You can set up additional sequences, and you'll want to select um, or search help on how to create additional sequences. Um, it's helpful because if I type something else into this field other than a check number, it might mess up my check number sequence, and I want to not have to redo that each time. There are multiple ways to select which payments or which invoices you want to pay. If you're wanting to pay all of your vendors, you're going to click that you could click the pay all at the button and it'll mark all of the vendors and it also marks all of the invoices underneath those vendors. Okay. Usually, though, you're only paying one or two vendors at a time. Um, and in this case, I'm writing out a check, and there's only two vendors that I pay via check. So I'm going to select those two vendors. And it actually selected all of the invoices underneath those vendors. As I'm clicking on the plus sign here, you'll notice that it expanded it out to show me the different invoices or the different pay dates. These are the different pay dates that those were generated on. And then underneath that, I might have more detail. So you might see multiple lines to that. 
Like for example, underneath my taxes over here, I'm seeing two lines for my federal taxes and one represents the amount that got taken out of each employee's paycheck. The other amount represents the amount that was employer taxes. So you could have um, multiple lines of detail underneath a single invoice there. When paying those uh, invoices for a, uh, a vendor. If you want to uncheck one because you don't want to pay that particular invoice, you can certainly uncheck it. If different invoices need to go on, invoice dates need to go on different checks, you can select that they're going on additional checks. So you can have up to six different checks there that they can be split out into. Okay, if you're not paying a full amount of um, uh, amount due, you could go ahead and just type in the amount that you're paying, and then the additional amount will remain as um, an outstanding invoice. So you'll see that that additional amount was left in the amount due column there. Okay, if you expand out a, uh, a vendor invoice to this level, and let's say that the amount that's there should have been to a different vendor. Say you had the wrong vendor selected, or maybe um, on this last date, let me let me open up Big Profit there. I'm sorry, I, I meant to just uh, ex, uh, come down here to this date. Let's say on this date, by the time that March 12th came around, we had switched um, vendors or we had switched uh, who is administering our 401k. So we need to switch the vendor on this. Instead of having to redo the pay run, I can right click on one of these and I can change the vendor. And I'd probably want to do it on each one of those. So then I can change the vendor to a different vendor. I should have at this point have established that vendor by creating the new vendor under setup and names, and then also attaching that new vendor to the liability. Any future pay runs then would go to the correct vendor. Okay, the other thing that I can do when I expand out a line like that is I can say that I am paying this, but um, instead of uh, that, but that an amount was wrong. Let's say that the employer portion got calculated wrong and I need to make an adjustment to it before it's paid. I can click on the adjustment amount and let's say that it should have been just 168. So I'm going to type in 168 there, and um, it's saying that I needed to make a $9.06 adjustment. And now it's going to ask me what account I want to make that adjustment to. And this adjustment would be done to my benefits expense. So I click OK. And then the amount being paid is going to just be the 177.06 minus the 906, but it's going to post both the payment and the adjustment at the same time. When you're ready to write the check, you're going to come down to the printing checks box here. Um, and you're going to click on that. Um, now, mine was already uh, green, so it's ready to print the check. But if yours was not green, it wouldn't print the check. So if that little check mark's not green, um, you'll want to make sure that it's set to print check. And what comes up here is going to be the defaults of what I set up under preferences for printing checks. Okay, I'm going to click cancel there for a second. Those preferences can be found underneath file and preferences. I'm going to drag that over to this monitor because it came up on another monitor. And if you're on standalone payroll, this preference can be found underneath vendor invoices and printing checks. And if I go to my database tab here, you'll see this is where I selected what printer, what style of checks, and what amount of detail I wanted on it, whether or not I'm printing the check number on there, the company name and address, and how many copies of that check I wanted. Okay, now if I was integrated with accounting, then I would have found that underneath the printing section rather than underneath vendor invoices. Okay, so like I said, that's going to be the default that comes up here. So once I've made my selections there, and I'm sure those are the right selections, if I want that to be the same each time I print checks from here, I can right click and set this as a default. And then this becomes the default preference for the combination of this company, this bank account, and this sequence. If I was making electronic payments or recording 
payments that were made electronically to my vendor, I might have chosen a different sequence like EFT, and then that one would have been marked to not print because you're not printing out a check. So different sequences can have different preferences with them or different uh, selections there. Okay, when I'm ready to post these payments, I'm going to just go ahead and click post and it would go ahead and write any checks out if I was writing checks. If I was making electronic payments, then it would um, only do the electronic payments. Now, um, I had one that came up on an overflow sheet, so it's just asking me what, uh, uh, what printer I want that overflow sheet to go to.